We should probably talk a little bit about medication management. How, how do you decide? How do you decide uh, how to medicate? What to medicate? Goes back to the hierarchy, I guess. What's the big impairment? Yeah. What's number one on the list? Um, Distress and impairment. And those are the things you really want to seek out and figure out and, and where why. that is. Yeah. yeah. And what level? Level, yeah, threshold to me. I mean, yeah. I'll tolerate some OCD symptoms. I'll tolerate some tics. Um, and because the payback of what you'll get, if somebody has, you know, only mild to moderate OCD symptoms, you're probably not going to drive them down too much with medicine. And the same with ticks, you're still gonna have them. Um, so my threshold for those two were pretty high. And for, but for ADHD, as I said earlier, I, I, we've developed pretty aggressive approach. You gotta treat that. Yeah. We're, we're probably more aggressive than what you're describing with OCD, simply because um, we think even sometimes residual symptoms are tough on people over the long haul. And there's some, with somewhat sophisticated techniques, you can sometimes get to that last little bit and, and get people closer to symptom free. But let's talk. Let's talk about ticks. You know, what do you what do you like to do? What's your? I think the first decision about pharmacologic treatment of ticks is: do you treat them at all? Mm -hmm. Quite seriously, and knowing that there's waxing and waning, that things may improve over time, and other disorders are more problematic. I've become more conservative over the years about not feeling compelled to treat every tick that I see. And I tell parents that, yep. and often they're relieved. I mean, certainly 10 or 15% of kids that come in have severe tics, and those need to be treated aggressively. But most kids who come into our clinics don't have severe tics. So tics. what do you use first if you decide you're going to treat the tics? Let's say in a kid who's had no prior medication. Mild, mild to moderate tics, my first line is still one of the alpha adrenergic agonists, either clonidine or guanfacine. And if they have ADHD, which they often do, combined type, then that's my first line treatment at this point. I've had good experience with it. It generally works. I feel pretty good about the ratio of efficacy against adverse effects. You can keep them on it for a while, so I'll usually go with that. I don't know what other people's or experience hey, what's, is. What's your In the adults, when they come to the clinic, just to go back a little bit to the adults, uh, those are the ones that fell through the cracks generally that come to you jaded, with very severe tics is typically the case that I, they may have a lot of other comorbidities, but to the extent that they came to you because they need help with the tics, you, you, uh, I find that it's more effective for me to show them that yes, I can modify that. Mm -hmm. I can, and then, then engage them in the treatment for the others of which they're more skeptical or they have more trouble with and they requires a bit more education. And I go with the more visible until I establish that rapport and confidence that they, I sort of know what I'm doing and, and then they'll, they'll be more willing to consider the others. Well, that's, that's really smart. It's just the opposite of what, what I do, but it makes total sense given the patient population. I, I really try and get rid of all the ADHD and the anxious, OCD, depressive stuff first. And I, I would like my kids, before I do tick suppression, I really want them to be squeaky clean. But we do see these kids who have really severe tics. And you talk to families and they just look at you like you're from outer space because they they appreciate the severity of the ticks at that moment and that's that's really what they want addressed and and that strategy that you well, use is build credibility by by working right. on the ticks is is a great then one. then one, once you're engaged in the process then you know down the line you start tapering the tick medication because now you have a handle on the OCD and the ADHD and so forth and without doing a lot of hand waving and perhaps as quickly as you think it's feasible then eliminate the, yeah. the one that you may have started out with. You know this is a I, I want to just step back because the question is you know what do you use first line for ticks and that sounds like a very simple question yeah. it's incredibly complicated I mean there are so many different ways to answer that mm -hmm. and um, I I'm always worried about this because who's going to watch this and think, oh, well, <laughs> yeah, well, Barbara Coffey says to put them on an alpha agonist, you know, so. Um, that's you know, that's what, what I do. I'm, that may not be what everybody well, else does. Well, yeah. exactly, because, I mean, okay, so I'll just throw but this who out. who and when you put them on the alpha agonist right. is probably more important than, exactly. than you're picking the alpha agonist is first. That's right. Exactly. I mean, right. I, I think that I have sort of a mixture of all this. I mean, yeah. first of all, I mean, um, how old's the kid? I mean, if they're 15, 
I tend to use an anxiolytic because usually what it is is that when they get up in public or when they're out with friends, there are, are situation-dependent problems. Mm-hmm. They don't care that they take it home. Hmm. They care when they take it out with their friends. You mean like clonazepam? Or? I give them some clonopin or something like that, a low dose that they can take at the time when they and, – and it's, it's, it's pretty classic. I mean, I've learned this from the psychologist, you know, is that you identify these – situations in which your tics are going to be bad mm-hmm. and so they take their clonopin if that makes them too sleepy try some clonidine something but something mm-hmm. pretty mild mm-hmm. and that usually works really really well mm-hmm. but it's not going to work for the poor seven or eight year old who scares me when i walk in mm-hmm. you know those kids i i i would and i and I, i'm not trying to be confrontational but i mm-hmm. doubt you start those kids on clonopin a kid clonidine. who's tick or clonidine, a child who is just ticking uncontrollably in your office. You, I don't see kids like that at age six or seven. What I see, getting back to John's point, is I see the triad of Tourette's, ADHD, and OCD, and I see that the OCD or the ADHD is usually driving everything. Right. And, and so that's, we that's start. Why this is a complicated question. Yeah. yeah. Well, but but you asked about ticks, and yeah. I'm yeah. you know, but we have to tease this out. So I yeah. would start by treating the ADHD, possibly with clonidine, right, to right. reduce that, right. and or. But you know, when you have that triad of three different disorders, each has a different medication indicated for it. That that's been yeah. my experience, and they they want somebody who knows the ticks and is willing to be aggressive around the tick management because the ticks are really in the way. I, I do think though that severity of ticks cuts in. I mean, it, it, it can be a trump card if they're bad. Oh, no oh, yeah. question. And, oh, yeah. And, and they're, if they're bad, like you said, I am a little bit no, reluctant I, to I find to that every trust, time I uh, try to, uh, to uh, emphasize that point, it, no matter how bad the OCD, no matter how bad the ADHD, if the ticks are severe, I can never touch the OCD. I can never touch the ADHD because all these activation phenomena yep. that you is just uh, rampant and the uh oh because i i tried ritalin when i was 12 and then again when i was 16 and then well then it becomes like a massive fla- a flare up and whereas if you keep the lid on the ticks you show them that you may still be able to introduce these agents uh, later gradually but you've already provided validation that yes i uh, even though i don't think it's the most important thing it's the one that's most important to you and we're just going to work with you in that regard. And then once they're engaged, it's much easier to switch strategies uh, than, than force a confrontation at the beginning. But that sounds more like an adult. Yeah, an adult yeah. kid. This in is a, an adult, in, a, yeah. in a young kid right. with, mm-hmm. with moderate to or greater tics. Mm-hmm. Moderate to severe. Th- then I, I would start thinking about the a, a specific treatment for that. Yeah. And... and um, I'm really looking to knock that down a peg or two. Mm-hmm. Probably risperidone would be the first drug I'd use. Um, and uh, But I would all the while be reminding the family that we'd come back to the issue of ADHD. Or right. But for the most difficult ticks, I, I like it when it's, when it's lots of many, many uh, simple motor ticks and kind of small bouts of complex ticks. I, I can appreciate some decrease in that with, with neuroleptics, mm-hmm. but the real complicated stuff, the orchestrated complex movements that appear purposeful, I think those are tough to knock in half with. Mm-hmm. with well, e- even the goal of knocking out all the ticks, I mean, I, I try to prepare people up front that we're not oh, going to happen. We're not oh. going to get rid of but all some the ticks. Some ticks appear to be much more responsive I to agree. medicine than I, others, I, I and agree. and the ones that are the most obnoxious and difficult for people are the ones that are least responsive. I think it's an interesting dilemma these days about what we do for moderate to severe ticks. The kid who's a candidate for a neuroleptic and. It, it's just interesting because I think the standard of care for since we've had the atypicals became the atypicals, risperidone. Most of us would do that in the moderate to severe range. However, Leon, I think the advantage to the typicals is that we don't seem to get the levels of appetite increase metabolic syndrome that are now becoming contributing perhaps to our major public health issue now of weight gain and obesity. Yeah, I, I use the flufenazine as kind of my second because I, I like it better than haloperidol, but yeah. r- risperidone is what I use first, but, but part of the education to me is what 
to, should the family expect. So we're not pushing the dose. Yeah. If we get 40% improvement, I say, we're done. <laughs> right? yeah. We're done. We're, yeah. we're not going to raise good. the dose. Good. I'm 40%. dancing in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So, I mean. Do you educate them about the weight gain and the appetite? Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Get and, them going and, and in an exercise make program. As strong and a case as I yeah. can that, yeah. that the low, lowest dose is the best dose. Yeah. yeah. And I, and I think the other to. thing that I use with families, because fam as soon as you start talking about a lot of families won't start until they hear the side effects spiel. Uh, but then once they hear the side effects spiel, they don't want to start. But then they're miserable because they don't want to keep with the symptoms. So I really talk about a trial. Mm -hmm. You know, it's going to take me four weeks to evaluate what this medicine will do. It'll evaluate both side effects and benefit. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. And in four weeks, if it doesn't work, if in four weeks it doesn't work and you notice the appetite increase, we're out of here. We'll, we'll pick something else. We'll move on. That oftentimes, the idea of a clinical trial, a little trial, mm -hmm. really makes it easier for people to get started and also yeah. prevents me. This is week four, Doc. You know, we're going to evaluate it. It keeps me from kind of losing the patient sure. and, and kind of progressively increasing dose or kind of getting lost in a clinical spiral. Mm -hmm. um, there's a beginning and an end to, to the process. The other kind of patient that we have is a patient that has been the recipient of very aggressive treatment for uh, uh, ticks in the package. And the apparent belief by the practitioner is ticks, OCD, ADHD, so they got three medicines on board or more. And, um, and my, I now have a, sort of the cottage industry of dismantling these cocktails that people are on. And, uh, and, and that is a, also a, an educational game of rearranging mm -hmm. what parents expect from what these medicines, you call them deliverables, mm -hmm. before. Right. Mm -hmm. And because they've, they got led down a primrose path that, mm -hmm. that one medication after the other was going to get them someplace that it probably isn't going to get them. Mm -hmm. 